And welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, the pipelines and product marketing company PPMC has announced an increment in the pump price of petrol. PPMC, a subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, said the pump price of petrol has increased to 151.56 naira per litre. This was contained in a statement signed by, Doc, uh, by D.O. Abalaka of the PPMC. According to the statement, the new price adjustment has been effected with effect from September 2nd, 2020. And joining us live this morning is Zewa Wagu, a convener, Say No Campaign Nigeria, and also uh, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining us uh, to the both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so very much. For I'm going to quickly start with um, uh, Mr. Wagu. What do you think justifies the increase in the price of petrol? Uh, I, I really have a challenge understanding um, what the pipeline products um, uh, management company calls uh, price adjustments. Whatever um, industry language that is used, what is important is, is that um, at the point in which these uh, price increases are happening, um, the majority of the citizens of the country are uh, under very challenging situation, uh, not just um, occasioned by um, the COVID-19 uh, situation, but also even the, the states prior to COVID-19, the general state of the economy and um, the, the, the complete absence of feeling uh, from, from, from those in political authority in the country. So, uh, I, by that, I'm just saying that I do not understand and cannot conceptualize what uh, these adjustments mean in the kind of situation that we have found ourselves. All right, and, and Femi Lawson, let me, let me go to you. It almost seems like the more the product, the higher the price, because this increase seems to be hinged on, you know, the easing of the lockdown. So can you help us make some sense out of this? Well, well I think we, we must get this right. You know, government is, you know, I have a spirit in its approach at arriving at some of the decisions. Only in my, you know, when there is the coronavirus lockdown, right? the same government gives the companies of petroleum product to 125 naira, you know, while of course July is limited back to the price of 145. And one excuse or one reason that has been given by successive companies in Nigeria has been, you know, requested for the increment in the company of petroleum products is the fact that government pays subsidy. Today, it is still shared in secrecy how much is being paid by government as subsidy. And if government says the sector has been fully deregulated, the government should play less role than it is doing currently in determining the price you know, of petroleum products in Nigeria. If, if there is nowhere in the world where a deregulated sector is still so much influenced and controlled like we are witnessing in the petroleum sector in Nigeria today. And that is one area where the government has not been transferred to Nigeria. You cannot continually wake up without sustained engagement with the citizens and begin to increase the prices of petroleum products arbitrarily. This is very unfair. In July, petrol came from 125 to 145. And in less than two months, Nigerians are not going to be paying more. You know, for the same product, shows that government see has is hard in the control of the pricing the marketing of the petroleum sector against what it has declared by itself, that the sector has been deregulated. And, and Mr. Wagu, what is the guarantee that there will be not more increase? Uh, because it doesn't, it kind of doesn't seem to be slowing down. I, I, I think that what has happened is that uh, the, the, the government uh, actually has been taunting on the patience of Nigerians. And um, because of the fact that there seems to be some, some, some feeling of anesthesia generally around responding to these hikes, whether they are electricity or um, petroleum issues, we'll continue to see 
the arbitrariness. We will continue to see. But really, the, the, the challenge is, is, is getting much more clearer that uh, many of us have outsourced the responsibility to resist unjust policies to, to some personality cults, you know. Um, and, and on the strength of that, government seems to understand that uh, that capacity, that, that um, provocation that, that needs to take place for people to resist some of these increases uh, is not going to happen. And so if that is the situation, uh, it is not unlikely that these adjustments will not continue. But like, like every other thing, Nigerians are very, very... Um, if you push, as you keep pushing, it gets to a point where they get to the wall and they, they bounce back. And, and that's going to happen pretty, pretty soon. So the, the bigger issue is not whether they are going to, um, they are going to adjust the prices. The increases may continue if we do not, all the theaters and platforms for resistance in the country continue to be anesthetized the way uh, we currently uh, are. Uh, Femi Lawson, it, it, is it possible, does it make any sense that the decrease or the reduction back then was a trap to increase later? Yeah, that's, that's why I said yeah, the government has been transparent in its approach. And just like a, a commendation of the day, you know, it is becoming clear that the government has taken advantage of the seeming silence you know, of the Nigerian public people to continue to engage, you know, in this uh, arbitrary increase. There is no justification whatsoever for this increase, and there is no guarantee that in the next couple of weeks or months, you understand, that this similar you know, increment will not come up again. I know it is a style in Nigeria, you know, for prices to hardly come down. The reason given for the max reduction uh, was the fall in the market price of crude oil and the, you know, okay, somebody, coronavirus. But as we speak today, no thing, no tangible has been given as the reason, you know, for government institution in determining the price, you know, of petroleum crude oil. And it is then for Nigeria is something that should worry us. Because today, either the civil society or the labor, whatever, uh, sector of the society gets carried along any longer. So by this government, whenever it has to arrive, arrive at the region, they are greatly impact the larger population of the city. So there is such no assurance that this government will not increase the uh, petroleum product again, even in the next one. Yeah, great thing you just picked about civil society now, because I was about to bring that up uh, with uh, Mr. Wagu. Um, it seems like civil society groups seem passive in the administration. Um, you already mentioned something close to that, you know, over the steady increase of four. But I'm, I'm going to ask if, you know, there is some, maybe there's a way that it is understood in those spaces, in the civil society groups, the NLC and the likes. Is there a way that, you know, the increase and the reasons behind the increase maybe is understood better than, um, you know, other Nigerians understand it. Um, and that's what makes, you know, the lackluster attitude that we see with those groups. I, I, I don't, I, I, what I think is, is simply that um, first, like I did mention the fact that we, we cannot create some set of people who uh, responsibility would be, they are, the, they are our, our resistance army. The, the deleterious consequences of price increases at whatever level affects everyone. And then you sit down and you're asking, uh, some people are not talking, there are particular people who, everyone that feels this can begin to organize in very small clusters. And that, that will trickle into some, some movement. And when that happens, um, we will... So what has happened is that you, if you understand the way uh, um, the NLC, for instance, the trade unions work, they need to have have organ meetings. They need to agree, and 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 if they don't agree, they need to go back again and ensure. So all the work that happens around getting the trade unions, which ordinarily is about is about you know the welfare of their members. If the generality of their members speaking through their organs do not want to 
uh, at this time um, engage in this in, in resistance, then the, the ordinary Nigerians have responsibility to force all of these people out. So what has happened is that once there is any challenge in Nigeria, people say, oh, civil society has not done this, uh, the NLC has not done that. And many of the people who do this will are quick to be the ones to quickly buy. I remember in 2015, when the president came in and increased prices, I remember being part of the protest at that time, many people today who are shouting that they want civil society to come out were the ones who were telling us we were hitting up the polity and that we are not giving anybody a chance to. But we understand and know that once this impunity is entrenched, it will be difficult to shake it off. But there is, the, the time for organizing is now. There is, no, there is no challenge. I think that the labor centers and their civil society allies are, in, are currently in some form of deliberation, and in, in few days' time, we, we will get a response from that area. Femi Lawson, um, um, I, I, don't, I don't want, you know, the conversation to be, you know, strictly towards, you know, labor unions and protesting and, and you know, pushing the government back. Yeah. Um, I also want us to have a conversation that hopefully we will be able to explain to the people why this is inevitable. Um, so why this is inevitable, why, why the increase you know, is inevitable. So I, can you help in any way to explain to Nigerians why the increase could not be avoided? Well, if, that is why the question of transparency is very key to every government. You know, today, this country, after 2019, you know, spent about $5 billion, you know, on subsidy payments on petroleum products, which by us standard, you know, does not represent any good for our economy. And this government, you know, came up, you know, and decided that we was going to end subsidy payments and, you know, the contracts be totally deregulated. And, you know, with the rising and falling prices of you know, the crude oil prices, you know, globally, Nigeria has Nigeria's cost of uh, subsidy has grown to an extent that you know it has become an industry on its own. So there was a need for a change, you know what I'm saying? Because subsidy was a lot of it was a lot of issues. Though it was unpopular among the people that government should you know, refuse its its investment in subsidy. But government had to do it, you know, the Jonathan government tried it in 2012, the rejected it. The Buhari government came and you know, implemented just like the uh, committee said in 2015. And that was the big for that. And people said, oh, let us move on. Now, the government is going to under that this schedule to pay subsidies, like it has been saying. And I don't think it is not up for government presently if we need that to have taken the picture. But what is missing, and my grandma, my one my is the role and the reason why the government has so much influence on in the pricing, you know, of product. In moving forward, if this sector should be regulated and you know it's liberalized enough to allow competition, I think what we'll be experiencing would rather be a decrease in pricing than an astronomical increase that has become enough every time. So there in the other sectors of the economy there where there's a lot of competition, and you find almost every time packages, reduction, or coming as a result of competition in the sector. But yet, there's no competition yet in the private sector in this country. Even though it, it's a lot of private sector participation, but it still moves in one direction, and it does not represent in the private sector driven economy. And that is why the government still takes up, you know, at prices arbitrarily. So until Sector is really liberalized, and there is a genuine competition above that. Point. Government should hands up sector if it's not ready to part of the whole business, rather than sitting as chair, you know, in determining the direction that they, the company, the sector moves. And that is why we continue to have this kind of issue that is inconsiderate to the side of the people. So if government is ready and willing to allow citizens to enjoy, enjoy the the dividend of the regulation of the sector. It should end up its participation and allow the private sector to compete. 
Thereby we can know what we are paying, what the government imposed for prices. All right, and lastly, to um, Zewan Wagu, I want your quick thoughts on people who, um, at a time like this, would call on the, uh, the Minister of Petroleum, of course, which is, you know, the president. You know, what would your thoughts be to, you know, the presidency at a time like this? Um, of course, bearing in mind that, you know, we've spoken about this earlier, we're just dealing with a pandemic, dealing with economic wars, unemployment and, and the likes. Um, what would your thoughts be to the president at a time like this? Uh, thank you. I, I think earlier you were you wanted us to start explaining for the government why they're doing what they're doing. I was actually going to and, ask and, whose responsibility it, should, it truly should be that it's to break it down for the people. To do that, there are already clearly um, licenses for private people who have refused uh, to to go into that venture because the corruption in the in the petroleum sector is still is is they, they are still enjoying it. So. I am not one who is completely saying, "Hey, government, take off your hand." All that, all that, have, we we saw it through the pandemic that the, the so-called private sector went under, went completely under. Government became more visible, everybody. But having said that, the the the, the point at, is is that the president must understand that at this point in time, that the 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 concept of engaging in policies that are pro people that are uh, endearing to the people will be important because otherwise they would unwittingly be rigging uh, whatever goodwill is remaining for this government. It must understand that the majority of the citizens of this country are wallowing in abject poverty, hunger, and starvation, and that the looting, the resources, the resources that we know have already been looted, and even the recovered looting should be used to cushion some of the effects of the volatility of the market and on all the other issues that can be provided as excuses right now. So for me, the big challenge will be, Mr. President, this is the time for you to come in and ensure that government prevails on this volatility in a way that helps the ordinary people to live a meaningful life going forward. Otherwise, the country will be thrown into unnecessary contestations and, and, and arguments. And what has happened is that it's not about, it's, it's not about, uh, is that unfeeling, that, that lack of feeling for the ordinary people that continues to make government adjust without understanding that these adjustments will have dire consequences for majority of the people who live in this space. Ezewa Wangu, the convener, Say No Campaign, Nigeria, and of course, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst. Thank you both for speaking with us this morning. And um, of course, uh, remember to stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so very much for having me. God bless you.